Today on InGrace, we're in Fairbanks, Alaska. You're gonna love today's episode. Ever since I was a boy, I've been fascinated with God's creation. I'm traveling the planet to tell his story about his world. I'm Jim Scudder Jr. Come with me on another exciting adventure in grace. Our adventure began with my lifelong desire to see the amazing Northern Lights. I knew one of the best places to see them was in Fairbanks, Alaska, and I knew one of the best times to see them was in January. Surprisingly, my wife Karen agreed to go on the frozen trip, and now all I needed was a production crew. I invited the director of InGrace Television, Paul Vizquez, and his wife Rachel to come into my office to see if they were interested in going. I've got an awesome idea and I want to get your guys' take on it. I want to do an InGrace series on the Aurora Borealis. This is a perfect adventure for the both of you to come on. I want to go up to Fairbanks in the winter. Oh. Are you guys up for that? Totally. Oh, yeah. All right, guys. Thank you. It'll be fun. Thank you. Can't wait for us. See you so there. So exciting. So off we went to Alaska. We had a little trouble getting out of Chicago because of a blizzard. I think this is God's sense of humor, preparing us for the cold to come. On the flight to Fairbanks, God sat me with a man named Kevin Roscoe. I learned that Kevin is a world-class ice sculptor on his way to the World Ice Art Championships. Our show about Northern Lights started to morph into a show about ice sculpting and dog sledding and snowmobiling and ice fishing and moose spotting and hot springs. We are in for quite an adventure. We made it to Fairbanks, guys. Yay, so excited. Looking forward to the trip. We're here for the auroras. Yeah. Right, gotta see them. Of course, it's cloudy right now, so hopefully it'll clear up. Hey, it'll be fun, right? We can't wait. So excited. We wanna show America and the world the beauty of the state and beauty of God's creation. Karen and I, along with Rachel and Paul, arrived at the place that we would call home for the next several days, the China Hot Springs Resort, about an hour northeast of Fairbanks. What an amazing place. Our first adventure was to take a dog sled ride. Okay, team, let's go, let's go on up, team. The dog sled ride was great. I felt like a real Alaskan, and I wanted to know more about mushing. So I asked our musher, Jeremiah, to tell us more. This area is known for the Yukon Quest. Yeah, yeah. So how, how long is that race? Oh, well, they say it's roughly a thousand miles. You always and, that, kind of and that's from Fairbanks, there. but it goes through this area and it goes all the way to Whitehorse? Oh uh, yeah, Whitehorse, Canada. So they, they actually alternate the route. Um, so this year it's not going as normal, but in previous years, uh, one year it would go from Fairbanks to Whitehorse and another year it would go from Whitehorse to Fairbanks. I see. Yeah, just to keep it interesting for the dogs and the mushers. Yeah. The Iditarod obviously is the most famous, Anchorage yeah. to Nome, right? Yeah, yeah. And they have different routes that they would do alternating, and that's, right. I think the symbolic length is 1,049 because Alaska yeah. is the 49th state. Yeah. Obviously, Nome, uh, we all have heard the story of the dog bringing the vaccine right. in time to get yeah. there. And I mean, it's really amazing what we've been able to accomplish with animals like these dogs. Yeah, seriously. I remember being earlier on in the season and, and I mushed, you know, at, at, at some level that was, you know, acceptable and good, right? We gave good rides, but now the way the dogs treat you and the way you see them, it's kind of hard for me to explain, but it really is different, you know? I, I would say it's the difference between like a good friend and like a family member. Wow. You know? These dogs live for this. I mean, they're just so excited when you guys go out and start picking who's going to come onto the team. Yeah, so, and, and you would have seen when we harness them up, right? They start going wild, they start running circles and, and getting really excited. You can hear them barking outside right now because they want to be running on the trail. I um, mean, we're going to run out here. We have a, another ride going out here shortly um, and we'll take them out. And you saw as well on the ride, right? They were really hyper excited in the yard. As soon as you're going, they're focused, their heads down, they're, they're pulling. So as we were riding on this ride, you were explaining the different dogs. So you have lead dogs, obviously that's right. self-explanatory, but those, those are the most important, right? The leaders. Everybody's important, I would say. 
Jeremiah was right. Everyone on the team was important, from the lead dog to the team dogs. It reminded me that so it is with serving the Lord. God has called some to preach to thousands, while others may only speak to one. But all are equally important to the Lord. Serving faithfully is the key. Who knew dog sledding could teach us such profound life lessons? Fairbanks is right here in the middle of the state of Alaska. So we're right up here, and this is called China. It's China Hot Springs. That's why the resort's here, and that's why you know we're here to film the Northern Lights. Uh, but such a huge state. I mean, massive, the largest state in the United States. And so beautiful and so natural and untouched still with the different mountain ranges. You have the Alaskan range, the Talkeetna range, the Wrangell, uh, the Chugach, and then a lot of glaciers uh, all through here. It's just an awesome, awesome place. Paul and Rachel were invited to go snowmobiling in the beautiful Alaskan wilderness. What an adventure they had. Uh, we just had so much fun snow machining. Definitely an amateur, but so much fun. One of us crashed. <laughs> One of us turned it on its side. <laughs> but definitely, we learned a lot, didn't we? Once in a lifetime opportunity out in the middle of Alaska, nobody around in powder. So, so much fun. While Rachel and Paul were zipping around on snow machines, I went into Fairbanks to the grounds of the World Ice Art Championships to meet up with my new friend, Seattle ice sculptor, Kevin Roscoe. I wanted to know more about his incredible talent. Kevin Roscoe, awesome to literally bump into you, <laughs> meet you on an airplane of all places. You meet some of the coolest people on an airplane. So tell me, is this me or you? <laughs> Actually, it looks, if we put a beard <laughs> on it, you know, fill out the face a little bit, it might be me. So, this is what we're going to become. Oh, I know, right? Dust to dust. <laughs> I'm telling you, it is so awesome when you start to see the creativity of you guys taking this block of ice and making something so incredible and so beautiful from it. Somebody philosophically told me once, it's like life, you know, it's temporary but we gotta do the best we can with it. For me, my philosophy has always been with art. It's something that lifts the human spirit. Uh -huh. You showed me a video of you cutting a support. <laughs> oh, no. You have the chainsaw, you're coming to this one column, and when I'm watching this, I'm like, there's a disaster about to happen. Yeah, yeah, it kind of leads up to that as I set it up for people, but. Either way, it's impressive what you guys do, and I applaud you, and I hope people will come to Fairbanks uh, and see this, or come to Seattle and uh, see your, uh, your stuff there. But listen, God bless you, appreciate you. If you love God's amazing creation, and you love adventure, then let me send you Treasures in the Snow. Alaska in the wintertime is incredible, and you're gonna see God's handiwork on display. When you give a gift of any amount to In Grace, more people hear about the gospel of grace, and you get this awesome DVD adventure. If your gift is $25 or more, let me also send you another exciting DVD, A Walk Through Creation with Ken Hamm. Call 800-78-GRACE or go online to ingrace.tv and receive this special offer. The number is 800-78-GRACE or visit ingrace.tv. Also working hard to run the World Ice Art Championships event in Fairbanks was world-class ice sculptor Steve Bryce. Steve and his wife Heather created the Aurora Ice Museum back at the China Hot Springs Resort, where we were staying. Steve, great to have you on today, and looks like you have quite the workshop happening here in Fairbanks. Yeah, what we're doing is uh, we're teaching some people kind of uh, how to sculpt ice. In 96, Kevin and I, we uh, carved two jousting knights. Yeah, we saw and those. We, we have kind of a replica of that uh -huh. at, at the Hot Springs, but uh, uh, the ones that we did were uh, larger than life size. Wow. 
uh, maybe 50% larger than life size. That competition set me on fire and wow. I've been on fire ever since. Wow. I love creativity because I, I believe it's a gift from God. You know, yes. Where does this come from? Well, it's a gift from God. and. <laughs> Every time I forget that, uh, <laughs> it, it doesn't uh, do me well, that's yeah, for sure. Yeah. The World Ice Art Championships were amazing, but so was the Aurora Ice Museum. When we got back to China, we talked with Steve's wife, Heather Bryce, about this awesome place. I just thought it was amazing how even out of a block of ice, God gave us the ability to create something absolutely gorgeous and breathtaking. That's a theme that this whole week is just the creativity of God. You know, you look at the snow on the branches, the auroras, the many things that he gave to us to enjoy. Playable xylophone. Oh my goodness. So. What? When I first built it, you could play the Alaska flag song on it, but it's not tuned right now. Tuned? Mm -hmm. You have to tune an ice xylophone. You can tune it. It's based on how thin they are and how long they are. All right, so what do you guys, what would you like to sing? Mary had a little. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna stick to uh, TV hosting and pastoring. <laughs> This is kind of the centerpiece of the place. This was originally 1996 World Ice Art Championship piece. Um, this is a recreation, but it was probably about two thirds this big. Wow. So, so ice will shrink, mm -hmm. sub sublimate? Sublimate, yeah. Okay, so it just kind of slowly goes away. And I think mm -hmm. some of these pieces had to be re recreated. And yes. So All of that. I probably put a hundred hours every year into this piece. Wow. New legs, new reins, new detail. Uh -huh. The shield obviously needs to be replaced soon. So the bodies. When you have art that's slowly disappearing, does that kind of kill you a little bit? For me, it's in the making. And that's uh -huh. why I love the competition so much because it's, it's just all inclusive. You're totally focused on what you're doing. Um, and as long as you get a good photo at the end, I'm satisfied. I'm never completely happy with what I've done. Mm. I haven't So yet. maybe you're okay with it slowly disappearing. Yeah, yeah. And, um, there's some like life lessons there because there's a lot of things that we'd love to have just absolutely perfect, but we're never gonna really achieve that. Exactly. But we can, you know, with the Lord's help, I think get closer and closer every day. It was interesting when we interviewed Heather, you know, we said, was it really, you know, is it kind of hard to see your creativity, you know, melt away. And she's like, no, the joy is in making it and then presenting it to the people to see. And she's like, then after that, you know, it's fine. And I just thought that was interesting, just how the joy is in being creative. Yeah, and God gives that creativity. And when I asked her about that, she seems to have never really considered where did creativity mm -hmm. come from? But all of that, you know, art and, and whatever, all of that comes from God. Right. Have you ever wondered about where does creativity come from? Like your desire to do all, let's try this, or it shows me that we have been created. You know, there's mm -hmm. an amazing intelligence that's creative that wants us to do that too. Yeah. I haven't ever wondered where it came from, I guess. Yeah. It, it's just been always with me. Right. So it's a gift. Yeah. And you know, I think everyone has that in some way. You know, mm -hmm. I'll never be able to do anything like this, nor play the xylophone. But we all have, you know, creativity within us. So I think it speaks to a creator that is like that. You know, he, he loves to see what we, what we can come up with, if it's good, you know, if it's something that will bless. And this, this is really you. The Aurora Room is great for people that didn't get to see the Auroras. There's our Aurora. This is our little ice outhouse that owner Bernie Carr wanted an outhouse. So the door usually works. It's a little... Wow. And it's it's not really a, an outhouse? No. This is our ice chapel, and we built it when with the inception of this place. Um, Steve and I were just dating at the time, and uh, when he proposed, it was like, well, if we have a chapel. We may as well get married here. So we, we were not the first ones to live here, but... Huh. This is a special place. Both my daughters were married here too. So. That is so fantastic. Yeah. Now I'm also seeing 
flowers inside these mm -hmm. carvings. Um, are any of these flowers from weddings? No, these or are the not flowers in, out there. In the entrance mm -hmm. were. Yep, they're from my daughter's wedding from last summer. So not many people can like stick the bouquet in a block of ice. Mm -hmm. So that's a pretty cool, mom, to have. Yeah. <laughs> As I think about ice and snow and these beautiful auroras, I have to think of scriptures that talk about God and, and his creation. In Job 38, in verse 22, it says, Hast thou entered into the treasures of the snow? I always love that phrase. Now, I think it's talking about the storehouses of snow, uh, the treasures of the snow. But I also think of just as you look across the landscape and you see the sparkle in the snow and when the sun hits it just right, or if it's frosting the trees in a certain way, you just have to just be overwhelmed by the, the genius of God, how he can just you know, sculpt as we're in an ice museum and, and they take all the time to sculpt and to think about these concepts of what they're gonna make. And God does that on a massive scale all over the earth, all of the time. I love the thought that God has created treasures for us in the snow. And then I love this one, uh, again in Psalm 147, verse 12, it says, Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem, praise thy God, O Zion, for he hath strengthened the bars of thy gates, he hath blessed thy children within, he maketh peace in thy borders, and filleth thee with the finest of wheat, he sendeth forth his commandment upon the earth, his word runneth very swiftly. And here's that verse again. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? It's about 20 degrees in here, but outside it's like negative 20. God sends forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? You know, but he's not a cold God. He's not indifferent. He doesn't stand afar off. He wants to be involved. He created us for fellowship and for a reason. That's the God we serve. He wants to bless. He wants to be involved. He wants to have you communicate. So many people think that uh, God, uh, religion is kind of impersonal. Stand up, sit down, recite these prayers. That's not the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible is personal. He sent his son to die for our sins on a cross. That's how much he loves us. And that's the God that created all that we see. He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his word to blow and the waters flow. God's word is so powerful and so precious. And I hope we appreciate that. And then in Psalm 148, verse seven, praise the Lord from the earth, ye dragons. So that tells me there are probably all these other uh, creatures still alive after the flood. And all deeps, fire and hail and snow and vapor, stormy winds filling his word. Such beautiful imagery and poetry there in the book of the Psalms, Psalms. Now, the Bible also describes God and angels and different things, white as snow, white as wool. So like in Revelation 1.14, this is the image of Jesus, and his hairs were white like wool, white as snow. Isn't that incredible? And then actually Daniel says something very similar. Daniel 7.9 says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. The Bible gives these descriptives and we can just think of the majesty and beauty of God there on the throne. And that's the God that we'll be able to worship forever and ever and ever. So much to do and see and so little time. We came here to see the Northern Lights and we will, but that will have to wait till next time. I hope you've been enjoying this adventure in Alaska in the cold winter months to see the auroras, the ice carvings, the snowmobile rides and all the different things. And we have another program coming for you. But let me just end with this really important thing. The Bible says that we have sinned and it says, though your sins be as scarlet, God will clean them whiter than snow. Isn't that interesting? We have sinned, we've messed up, we've committed, you know, since we've lied, we've cheated, we've stolen, everyone has, we've all done these things. And the penalty of these sins is death according to the Bible. 
So that's the bad news. The good news is Jesus came to cleanse our sins. He came to pay for our sins. And if you will by faith receive him, you will have everlasting life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So many people think that they can be saved by works, by doing good things, by trying to be a better person. The problem is we've all fallen. We've already failed. We can't solve our problem ourselves. That's why Jesus, the Son of God, came. He died on the cross and he rose again. And he's offering to all of us eternal life. He wants to cleanse your sins, your stains, with his precious blood. And that will be whiter than snow. I was blessed to preach at the Bible Baptist Church in Fairbanks, Alaska, in the middle of our trip. Pastor Doug Duffett is a good friend and an amazing pastor. After church, which was packed even on a Wednesday with bitter cold temperatures, we spoke to some of the members of that church about what they thought about the Aurora Borealis. And what they said was getting me even more excited about what we will show you next time. I think they're bright and flashy and kind of mesmerizing. Oh, I, they're an encouragement to me. If you make uh, sounds, they uh, fluctuate. Like if you whistle, if you see the northern lights uh, and you whistle, they'll, they'll dance. It's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. It's my first time seeing them. I just about cried. I could not believe. If you love God's amazing creation and you love adventure, then let me send you Treasures in the Snow. Alaska in the wintertime is incredible and you're gonna see God's handiwork on display. When you give a gift of any amount to In Grace, more people hear about the gospel of grace and you get this awesome DVD adventure. If your gift is $25 or more, let me also send you another exciting DVD, a walk through creation with Ken Ham. Call 800-78-GRACE or go online to ingrace.tv and receive this special offer. The number is 800-78-GRACE or visit ingrace.tv. Record every single InGrace episode. You will be so blessed as we learn all about God's world and God's word. InGrace is a viewer-supported ministry. Thank you for your prayers and gifts.